Imagine a bunch of aliens turned up at Madison Square Garden during a basketball game and tried to work out what was going on. They'd see a bunch of abnormally tall men trying to shepherd an orange ball into an elevated basket who refused to just pick up the ball and carry it. I want to say... mating ritual? Yet somehow the noble sport of basketball simply isn't weird enough for video games, which is how we ended up with these bizarre mutated takes on the sport. Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City, tells the 100% true story about what happened during Michael Jordan's brief retirement from the sport between 1993 and 1995. In it, the nefarious Dr. Maximus Cranium kidnaps the teammates of Michael Jordan before a big charity game. It's up to Jordan to answer questions such as, where are they imprisoned? Can they be rescued in time for the game? And who went to the trouble of installing basketball hoops throughout this underground prison? MJ fortunately has a supply of magical basketballs to vanquish the legions of zombies, robot spiders, and paparazzi in his way. And on the cover, he's pulling exactly the face you would if you had a freezing cold basketball in one hand and an on-fire basketball in the other hand. Excellent face acting, Michael. This is actually why they cast him in Space Jam. Or it will be once I finish editing the IMDb trivia page for Space Jam. Shaq Fu tells the story of then Orlando Magic star Shaquille O'Neal discovering a dojo for the Chinese martial art of Kung Fu in Tokyo, which is in Japan. He's then whisked off to a strange dimension known as the Second World, where he has to rescue a young boy named Nezu from an evil mummy named Set Ra via the time-honored technique of kicking everyone's teeth in. Oh, and hey, Shaq was also on the way to a charity match when he got abducted. Is the moral of these stories never do anything for charity? Still, the Shaq daddy has been blessed with impressive moves thanks to the rotoscoped animation of Delphine software seen previously in Another World and Flashback. They even captured that unique way that Shaq jigs around after a fight like he needs the bathroom. Now that is attention to detail. The original Barkley Shut Up and Jam starred NBA great Charles Barkley and was a legit basketball game in which you played basketball. Then, 15 years later, along came unofficial sequel Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden, which kicked down the long-standing barrier between the genres of sports and Japanese role-playing games by being a Japanese role-playing game. In further defiance of basketball game convention, Shut Up and Jam Gaiden takes place in a future world where basketball isn't even legal on account of how Charles Barkley did a dunk so powerful it killed everyone in the stadium. Sure, why not? Flash forward to Neo New York where another deadly so-called chaos dunk has killed millions and left the city in poverty-stricken ruins. Sure, why not? And the round mound of rebound and his party must fight terrorist organization Blood Moses as well as basketball spiders, basketball monsters and basketball zombies. Also basketball sliding tile puzzles. The game is so willfully weird you'd think it couldn't be weirder if it tried. Except it did try and the sequel, The Magical Realms of Tiernar Nog, Escape from Necron 7, Revenge of Kucha Lane, the official game of the movie, Chapter 2 of the Hoops Barkley Saga, comes out this year. Remember how the Washington Bullets changed their name to the Washington Wizards to avoid the violent connotations of bullets, given the gun crime and not good homicide rates of Washington in the 1990s? Well, Basket Brawl went in the other direction, pumping up the violence by being a two for the price of one sports sim and beat em up. In it, you could win at basketball by being good at basketball or by beating your opponent unconscious. That's generally frowned upon if you're not up on the rules of basketball. Maybe next time think twice before playing a pickup game with players who call themselves Bruiser or Slash or Biff. Did we learn nothing from Back to the Future? Bring it on. Slam City with Scotty Pippen decided that what basketball fans really wanted wasn't to play a game of basketball, it was to barely control a video of someone else playing a game of basketball. It also decided to introduce romantic subplots into the basketball game genre, leading to such cringeworthy pickup lines as this. The biggest romance of all, though, is between No Tippin' Pippin and his lucrative Nike sponsorship deal. <laughs> 
Look, he even has a man who follows him around driving a van full of sneakers just so he's never too far from a wall made of sneakers. Don't you might like the new pair of Nikes, since yours look a little beat down. Uh, it's, it's cool, man. You two seem to have a thing going on. The only way to experience Slam City in its full colour glory was to bolt both a Sega CD and a 32X to your Genesis console, creating a horrible Frankenstein's monster stepping stone between the 16-bit and 32-bit generations. And was it worth the effort of swapping four discs and the additional $460 worth of hardware? Yeah, no. Bill Lanebeer's Combat Basketball paints a pretty bleak picture of basketball in the year 2030. Bill Lanebeer, a notoriously, let's say, physical player for the Detroit Pistons, becomes a basketball league commissioner and fires the referees, revokes all the rules, and litters the court with anti-personnel wines. And if you think that paints Bill Lanebeer as a bloodthirsty villain, well, hey, he put his name on it. The game adopts a rare top-down view, turning it into a game that resembles speedball, but where the ball flies out of bounds every 30 seconds, which is about as much fun as it sounds. Like I said, a bleak picture. The crucial error made by developer Hudson Soft was creating a game named after a roughhousing player who was loved by Pistons fans, but despised by just about everybody else even remotely associated with basketball. Well, that and making legitimately one of the worst sports games ever made. So, two crucial errors. Come on. Take that. NBA Jam Tournament Edition doesn't so much have a problem with the real-world game of basketball. All right, the ball occasionally catches on fire and the dunks have been spiced up a bit, but otherwise this is the sport pretty much as it appears on television. What NBA Jam Tournament Edition has a problem with is the real-world basketball players, specifically that they're regular, boring basketball players instead of mascots, musicians or US politicians. The game is chock full of bizarre secret characters, including current presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton, always the bridesmaid British royal Prince Charles, from the outside, Swiss. and that other prince, you know, the fresh one. Fresh. Damn it in. I guess all that shooting some b-ball outside of the school paid off. Too bad a couple of guys who were up to no good started causing trouble in his neighbourhood. He got in one little fight and his mum got scared Stop. and said... Stop. Stop. Those were the seven times that basketball wasn't sufficiently weird enough for video games and video games were like, there, I fixed it. If you like videos like this about video games, not just about basketball, we do this stuff all the time. Oh my gosh, there are two sets of videos here that you will love, I promise. So on one side, we have features that are like this, but don't necessarily contain basketball, although some of them might contain basketball, you'll have to watch them all to find out. And then we've got Show of the Week, which is our studio shot, lovely show where we make silly faces and silly jokes and talk about video games as well because that's our whole deal. Yeah it was, like, dunk it straight into your subscriber box, how about that? How, like, what like that? Or that? How much longer? Okay, am I out of the game now? Okay, I can subscribe, I'll see you next time.